Wouldn't it be great if there were a way to lower our heating and cooling costs, while at the same time lessen our dependence on foreign oil? Well, actually, there is. It's called geothermal technology. So on today's show, we'll learn about the components that make up these incredibly efficient systems as we catch up with our geothermal specialist, Brian Erlob from GeoComfort. Oh, beautiful summer day out here. At least the sun isn't blazing down on us, but at the end of the day, the sun is really what's gonna drive this new geothermal system? Yes, Stu, what we've got here is we've got a retrofit application out here in a rural setting, and we've got this beautiful home. They've obviously got some acreage here, and this is an existing home, about eight years old, but they've opted to go with a geothermal system to increase their overall efficiency and lower their utilities. Really, it's only eight years old, yet they're replacing their traditional forced air system with geothermal. You find that's a trend of late? Yeah, absolutely it is, because number one, we've got the federal tax credit. There's a 30% tax credit on geothermal systems, which is uncapped on the total system cost through 2016. So that's really been driving the installation of our systems. Sure, and that 30% can play a big role in helping a homeowner with the installation cost of a geothermal system, but there's a lot more benefits than just the federal tax credit. Well, absolutely, there's a lot of benefits. Number one, with energy savings, which translates into cost savings on your utilities, but also there's many other benefits like comfort. They're definitely more comfortable systems. They're more reliable, they last longer. Your energy source, your investment out here in the yard is a one-time cost that doesn't deteriorate. So the benefit of that is you only buy it once. And not to mention the environmental benefits because as I look at a geothermal system, it lessens our dependency on foreign oil. Yeah, absolutely. We are reducing our energy needs, which is also reducing our carbon footprint. And depending on, you know, obviously where the electricity comes from, okay, they're doing their job of greening up the energy sources for electric generation. We're doing our part at the end use than to also save energy and use less electricity. Sure, so why not look at an electrical system like geothermal, because at the end of the day, that's what's driving the system, is the heat stored in the earth, but you're using electricity to flow that heat into the house. Yeah, absolutely, that's right. Okay, well let's focus in on the theory behind geothermal technology. Mention the sun is the driving force behind it. Let's start by explaining how you can capture what we call the free energy that's stored down here. Yeah, definitely. Um, what we've got here, obviously, we've got a nice rural setting. So we dig down here in the yard six, eight feet, and it's about 50 degrees all year round. It does not really change. And that's really stored energy from the sun. So that sun energy is warming the earth. The crust layer of the earth is being warmed by the sun and actually storing that energy like a solar battery. So even when we've got two feet of snow here, that energy has been stored in the earth. So what we've got to do then is really just capture that energy and be able to transport it into the home. Because again, that is the free renewable energy portion. The sun shines every day. So the energy is really being stored as heat in the earth and it has to be below the frost line or about eight feet down? Yeah, absolutely. In the wintertime, obviously, we want to be down there below the frost line and we're talking about heat. So we're moving the heat energy then into the home. But again, it does also cool. So in the summertime, we're actually cooling the house, taking the heat energy and dumping it out here into the nice cool 50 degree ground. Okay, so how do you accomplish that goal of capturing that free energy? And number one, that's through the loop field, which we're gonna show here in a little bit. And then we transfer that through a fluid. So we circulate a fluid through the ground loop and that fluid as it gets circulated from the house and through the loop is either picking up heat in the winter time and bringing it into the home or it's taking heat from the home and dumping it into the cool ground in the summertime. Okay, so that makes sense. As the fluid circulates, it becomes the same temperature as the surrounding earth. But that's still only about 50 degrees in the winter time going into the house. How do you raise it to say, warm air being distributed through the house, you want about 100 degrees. Well, that's a great question because that's really the, the magic behind it. We've got the 50 degree ground temperature and we're bringing in that free energy, but then that's where the heat pump comes in, okay, which has to intensify that heat through compression and electrical energy from 50 degrees up to about 100 degrees so that way we can heat your home to 72 degrees in the wintertime. Well, it's fabulous technology. I'm anxious to learn more about it. Let's go learn more about the looping options. Sounds great. And we'll do that next. We continue with today's Home Remodeler.